Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com, and this is your Photo News Fit. This fix is brought to you by the fine people at Adorama. If you're looking for new, used, or refurbished gear, which I own a bunch of refurbished lenses, or you'd like to trade in some of your gear for some cash, head on over to adorama.com slash fro. First up, after a few weeks of rumors and a few leaked images, Sigma has announced not one, not two, but three lenses for both Sony E-mount and the L-mount Alliance. Excuse me, I mean, L Mountain Lions! Starting with the cheapest first, let's take a look at the Sigma 45 f2.8 contemporary lens. Now, being that this lens doesn't carry the art stamp of approval, this is considered to be a more affordable lens for people just getting into the full frame game. The lens is priced at only $550, and when I say only, I guess it's kind of affordable, but affordable is relative. And I'm still kind of confused as how you came up with a 45 millimeter lens in the first place. Well, if you know why they went with please let me know down in the comments below. Next, we have the Sigma 14 to 24 2.8, and yes, I said it's a 2.8 and not an F4. Now, if this lens is similar to the one that I tested on the Nikon camera, it is going to be fantastic. Now, Sony does have a $1,700 12 to 24 F4, and this Sigma will be priced $300 less at $1,400. Dan, is that math right? Does that 17, 16, carry the seven divided by two, Mind about 1400, yeah, it's right. I used Common Core math for that. Man, do I sound like an idiot. That dumb f Common Core math. No, it's not as wide, and yes, it's a little bit heavier, but for $300 less, I think the quality will actually be better than the Sony version. And the third lens that was announced is the 35 1.2 Art. Yes, a 1.2 lens is coming to the Sony camera. Who would have thunk it? Take that, Nikon. Take that, Canon. Take that. Who wrote Pentex here? Sony's tiny little mount? What a hole. Officially has a 1.2 lens. Dan, I always thought their hole wasn't big enough. That's what she said. This 35 millimeter consists of 17 elements in 12 groups, including three SLD elements and three aspherical lenses, as well as uses an 11 blade diaphragm with rounded aperture blades. My biggest question is, how well will it focus? Will it be slow? Will it work with IAF? Will it work well tracking subjects? Sigma took this into consideration when it used a large hypersonic motor, yeah, as well as a focus by wire system that it promised will help give you accurate control when manually focusing. Sigma was kind enough to include some very mediocre sample images like this one, this one, and this one. Now, if this lens is for you, it will hopefully be here by the end of the month for both E-Mount and, and the L-Mount Alliance for only $1,500. Now, which of these three lenses would you choose and why? Here's another Sigma story because Sigma took up the world! But not only announcing three new lenses, but announcing the world's smallest and lightest pocketable, yeah, pocketable, pocketable, pocketable full frame camera. So is it pocketable with a lens on it, Sigma? I don't think so. You put the lens in your other pocket. Oh. I didn't think of that. Anyway. The camera is called the Sigma lowercase fp, and get this, it takes an L-mount lens, making it a part of the That's the quiet version. The camera measures in at only 112.6 by 69.9 by 45.3 millimeters, which means nothing to me because I'm used to measuring small things in only a few inches. That's what she said. And millimeters just makes things seem larger when they actually are not. At least so I've been told. The camera weighs in at 370 grams, or I Googled it, only 13 ounces for those who are wondering. Now, how did they make it so small and so light? Easy, they worked with Richard Simmons. 
We're sweating to the oldies. Actually, they left out a bunch of different features, including a mechanical shutter, which will make more sense when we hit on some more specs. Now, the lowercase FP sports a 24.6 BSI CMOS sensor and not, I repeat, not the Foveon one that Sigma is said to be working on as well for the future. The way of the future. One thing noticeably missing from the camera is an EVF, which in my mind renders this camera completely useless as a stills camera. But maybe that was Sigma's intent. And by maybe, I mean, it's probably not. You know what I hate seeing? People shoot like this. Oh look, I'm getting a great picture. I nailed it, nailed it, got it. Oh, I look so cool just holding the camera out like this, taking pictures, looking at the LCD. Hold the camera right, people. This is how you hold a camera. You put your eye up to the viewfinder and you shoot photos. It's stable. In terms of photo specs, this camera can shoot 14-bit raw DNG files that get this up to 18 frames a second for up to 12 frames. What the f does that even mean? Wow, you could shoot 18 frames a second, but for only 12 frames. Whoop de doo. So it's basically like you could shoot 12 frames in under a second. The camera sports a native ISO range of 100 to 25,600, along with a 49 point contrast detect AF system that offers face detect, eye detect, as well as subject tracking. I always said that somebody needs to simply make a box with a sensor for video, and I think that's exactly what Sigma has done. You can capture 12 bit cinema DNG raw videos at 4K, 24 frames a second to an external recorder, which defines defeats the entire purpose of having a small camera that fits in your pocket. You put the recorder in your back pocket. Right, that makes more sense, Dan, thank you. Sigma has designed this camera to be modular with future accessories like a hot shoe, LCD viewfinder, and a larger hand grip. Do I think that will ever happen? No. The lowercase FP is priced at, well, no one knows because it's still to be determined. If I had to guess, it's gonna be around $2,000, but what do you think it's gonna be? Next up, we have some breaking news. Let's send you out into the field to our field reporter by the name of Jared, who's currently in New York City. Thanks, Jared. Jared here live, coming to you from New York City in my beautiful hotel room where moments ago, Steven, the, the teleprompter's not working. Steven, fix the teleprompter. We'll do it live. Sony has announced the A7R4, a 61 megapixel camera that no one saw coming. I actually didn't see that this was going to come out, and I'm not sure anyone actually needs it. I say that because the A7R3 is still a fantastic camera, yet Sony decided to cut its life short. Can we pour one out for the homies, please? The good news is, if you've been waiting or saving up money to get an A7R3, now may be the best time to pick one up. The A7R4 sports a 61 megapixel BSI CMOS sensor with 15 stops of dynamic range. Count them. One stop, two, 15 stops. That's the number. You could shoot 10 frames a second for up to seven seconds with full AF and AE. There's 567 phase detect auto focusing points that cover 74% of the frame. The camera sports a new 5.76 million dot EVF and a pretty crappy three inch 1.4 million dot LCD that still doesn't let you touch the menu. There's dual UHS-2 SD card slots, though I would have preferred seeing XQD in there, in my opinion, being that Sony made that brand itself. It sports a brand new body design with a much larger grip, new button layout, better feeling buttons, Z battery, and a new grip. If this camera's for you, it will be here sometime in September for the low, low price of $3,500 in the US and $4,500 in Canada. Insert Canadian joke here, A. You guys are dick. So that's my news reporting here from New York. Let's send it back to the studio for Jared to wrap it up. And there you have it, that's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo.com. See ya.